get it? Because the X is on fire? 45 seconds of logos! Are we destined to a fate beyond our control? Or can we evolve? All I know is that Jean Grey is narrating, which means she survives this movie. Spoiler alert, narration. Narr alert? Spoilation? Become something more. It's not an X-Men movie if we don't open on ponderous narration about mutation. Like, literally. Can you change your station? The song's over, honey. You said that just songs ago. Whatever happens in this setup for tragedy backstory is certainly the fault of the parents for not sharing the radio with the whole family. Okay, how about I make you a promise? When you were old enough to drive, you can listen to whatever music you want. But why would little baby Phoenix believe her mother if she just lied about sharing the radio? Poor Jean is back there imagining a world where she won't pick a single song for eight more years. Car roll crash has been happening for an uncomfortable amount of time. Also, superheroes gotta have dead parents cliche. So you had a bad day. So there's a car wreck. She doesn't have a scratch. So someone calls Charles f***ing Xavier to handle it? This is the early 70s. He's still a secret operative most of the CIA isn't even aware of, right? Even if he could censor and find her, which he can, why would the hospital staff let him in to interview her? So what happens to me now? Well, now Professor X will manipulate your mind to build a conscience for you, since you don't appear to have one. Seriously, her parents are dead, so how is she not sobbing? What you choose to do with your gift, that's entirely up to you. It's not his fault. He signed on for multiple films, and then the studio went and sold itself to a competitor. But it is still disappointing to see James McAvoy being so boring, when we've just seen him be so brilliant in Split and Glass, and even it Chapter 2. There are no tire tracks on this driveway as the car pulls in. Does Charles employ someone to lay down fresh dirt every time he leaves? What an ass. Holy sh I just realized that's the girl that ate Jen Aniston's Cinnabon in the airport in Office Christmas Party, a movie I have totally not seen 15 times. Oh, ma'am. I got something on set six. This is 1992. How is she the only woman in the entire launch room? How offensive and ridiculous. Get her out of there! That was a joke, people. Calm down. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. That you both look amazing for being over 50 and 60 years old? You were both present during the f***ing Cuban Missile Crisis, for Christ's sake. The jet can't get that high. Even with the new booster rockets and all your modifications. <sighs> Give me one mother goddamn bullshit bitch assing one good bastard reason why the resident smart mutant would already be working on getting the X-Men into space in 1992, as opposed to, I don't know, any other scientific pursuit. But thankfully for this not historically accurate shuttle mishap, dude's been working on getting an X-Jet into space. And by golly, it's gonna f***ing pay off. Mr. President, are you seeing this on TV? Who the f*** is that in the Oval Office in this movie's 1992? Some kind of Nixonified Clinton? These young version X-Men movies love hopping to important time periods, but then changing the specific details involved. But I can promise you, no one with black hair was president in 1992. We're doing space missions now. Cool. A portion of a future Fast and Furious table read ends up in this movie. Will the X-Jet even get that on? Well, technically the... It'll get us there. Let's go! You might think Mystique is in a hurry here, but it's clearly Jennifer Lawrence who wants all of this to end quickly. Also, just before this happened, Hank told Charlie that there was no way this jet was going to make it. But now, because the simple reason movies, it will get up there no problem and there won't be another question about it. If anything goes wrong, I'll turn us around in a heartbeat. I know you will. She will not. But that basketball just fell down into the mechanism, right? That can't be good. How many basketballs are down there now? Like one for every opening of the court, right? The whole jet underneath the basketball court thing has never made much sense to me. Even if the jet can't just hang out above ground with a basic level one Professor X invisibility cloak, which it can, there would still be better and far less used areas of the grounds to park the jet underneath. No, why not under the croquet court or under the shrub maze? Like you're hiding it under a basketball court to keep the satellites from spotting it. But then you lift up and off like this, expelling tons of energy and what? You think the satellites can't see that? Honestly, the X-Men base location should be about as secret as the location of the G-Spot, which is to say it's obvious for those willing to do the work, but for the lazy it remains unfindable. Has called in the aid of the X-Men. No one will be seated during the B-roll that Michael Bay directed. Ladies and gentlemen of NASA, this is the voice of Charles Xavier. Could somebody please apprise me of the situation? Classic example of a movie not thinking beyond the scene. Why and how could Charles tap into all of NASA and broadcast a message to everyone who works for NASA, but still not be able to read minds there enough to apprise his own ass of the situation, huh? Also, looks like they fixed that female staffing issue from two minutes ago, so now I get to send continuity. I think this is not as much fun as I thought it would be. Movie quotes its own viewers. Storm, seal those cracks. The f we are in space, lady. Storm controls the weather on Earth. Why'd you even bring her ass up to space anyway? But somehow, now she can plug air holes in spacecraft? Strap in, we're headed home. Funny, my college girlfriend. Oh, strap in. Never mind. We're not leaving anyone behind. I am not putting this team in more danger. With the combined abilities of Nightcrawler and Quicksilver, which you just showed, why is getting one more guy back to the ship that f***ing difficult? Jean can hold that shuttle together, can't you, Jean? 
Why does Gene have to hold the shuttle together if the main issue is that a huge solar flare is going to hit it in a minute? The ship is toast, and nothing about the mission to rescue the captain has anything to do with keeping the ship intact. There will be shuttle debris all over the place when Nightcrawler goes to save the captain, none of which is being cleared by Gene. If we're worried about the ship collapsing and killing the captain, then say so. Otherwise, there is no reason to keep it together, other than to have her out here and absorb a ton of energy to become Dark Phoenix. Ten. Nightcrawler has ten seconds to get this guy and then goes straight to Gene and get them back on the X-Jet. But some f***ing how this asshole can't do that task in ten f***ing seconds. How does Nightcrawler need a helmet, but his hands are fine being exposed to open space? Man, even after going into space and sucking an evil nebula into her body, her makeup still looks fantastic. No more class at the end of the day. Yeah. They cheer now, but only because they forget it's already 3.30 and classes were already over for the day. I basically did everything. I mean, Gene did a little, like, towards the end, but it was... Mostly all me. Why'd you reduce this character to Star-Lord style braggadocio? He was bombed in the last couple movies because he was the one doing everything. And while he was cocky, he was never a liar. But now you need a cheap laugh, so you wrote this. God, this movie is balls. You put those kids in danger. They're not kids anymore, Raven. But you can understand her confusion about anyone's age in this movie, considering both Mystique and Charles have barely aged since 1962. And maybe that should be the central concern of this movie. How is anyone not aging? Because we're taking bigger and bigger risks. And for what? Please, tell me it's not your ego. Would a man driven by ego confess that his true motives are egocentric? No, he'd come up with something like, It's all just a means to an end, Raven. Tell me it's not your ego. Being on the cover of magazines, getting a medal from the president. Does she even f***ing know this guy a little bit? Or is the screenwriter the person that doesn't? I can't actually remember the last time you were the one risking something. F***ing hell, Raven. You don't remember him taking a paralyzing bullet to save the world in first class? I've never seen a power reading like this. A power reading? A power reading? A power reading? <laughs> Obvious alien activity, and of course, only a random dog even sees it. F any movie that dedicates over one minute of screen time to a barking dog. Every dog in earshot of my speakers is collectively losing their canine Shapeshifters have no imagination. Clearly the better option is to morph into Luna the dog. You'd have free reign of planet Earth because everyone loves golden retrievers. Movie has time for this. Wait, so the ex-kids zap off into a forest at night to party and drink and Xavier's just cool with that? And yeah, maybe he wants them to have fun and be teens, but underage drinking? Is Storm doing this ice trick for everyone? And at what point does using your powers like this become patronizing? When does the feelings of being taken advantage of grow inside you until one day you snap and scream, bring your own damn ice, laser face? Sorry, just looking for a more interesting plot here. Now we're the only What's left? Last of the first class. Wah wah. What do you think the X and X-Men stands for? Well, even if it's Xavier, it's probably still only because he started the school and not because he's in love with himself. Come dance with me. The smartest thing he ever did was take a chance with me. Did you hear what the kids are calling? Phoenix. No. Bird that rises from the dead. You'd think this nickname would have started after Jean defeated Apocalypse because her powers manifested in the literal shape of a phoenix. I can read Professor X's mind right now. Why the f did I tell Hank to limit this chair to walking speed? This jacket has been driving me crazy since the presidential dinner! I think that whatever happened in space did something to her. Well, duh! Aside from a dozen eyewitnesses, Hank examined Jean minutes after they returned from space and was able to tell her powers were off the charts. Tell us something we don't know. I mean, when a woman says no and you keep pressing, you probably deserve a bloody nose. Or worse, even. I need, to see, I need to see my father. Your, fa your father's- he's, a, he's alive, I can hear him. Daddy issues. Batman's got daddy issues, Superman's got daddy issues, Daredevil's got daddy issues, Iron Man's got daddy issues, Thor's got daddy issues. My point is that this movie ain't covering any new ground. Like, at all. Okay, I could hurt you again. I'll take that chance. Literally every single one of my college relationships. She's all desire, all rage, all pain. That's all coming out at once. Is this a metaphor for delayed puberty or a more literal interpretation of a recent visit to a Mexican food buffet? I just realized that I hadn't written a sin for four minutes of movie time, so I went back and watched those four minutes again to see if I missed sins. And nope, just major boring shit about her and her dead not dead dad and reliving that f***ing car crash again. Wait, no, I think reliving the f***ing car crash actually is a sin, so let's add one for that. You shouldn't have come here. And you shouldn't have washed that cashmere top on high heat because those buttons are holding on for dear life. I don't have a home. You made sure of that. You also don't have a solid American accent nailed down just yet, but it's okay. You're a great actress. Not everyone can be Christian Bale. Who called the f***ing cops? The f*** was this asshole waiting for? Literally every other X person has been doing battle for 15 seconds or so, while this guy just hung back like a f***ing selfish jerk. I've got the shot. I'm taking... No, you're not. 
Does anyone know the best way to treat Whiplash? Professor X's back and forth manipulation of his team has given me neck pain. Don't worry, I'm sure Storm can fix the leaks. Also, why can't she shapeshift around these wooden things? Why can't the shapeshifting solve the wounds as well as it changes her appearance? She's controlling all the atoms in her body to shapeshift, right? I'm just saying there are a few dozen better ways you could have killed off Mystique, but you buff eat her with wooden stakes. Well, I feel nothing. Raven died doing what she did best. Getting impaled. She is not gone. She is. <laughs> I refuse to use an umbrella because my sorrow is so great I deserve to be so- You can find her and bring her home. Um, the last Bring Her Home mission went poorly, so the fact that Dude Man here wants to double down on that idea is a little crazy. Granted, he's the boyfriend, but hey, if murder isn't grounds for a breakup, I don't know what is. Do you know, this is where I first met Raven. In a kitchen? That's so Raven. It's your fault she's dead. He's not wrong. I don't mean to play the shoulda, coulda, woulda game here, but Hank may have been able to stop Gene with the stun gun before Charles interrupted him. You messed with the mind of an eight-year-old girl. These two have worked together for 30 years, and I am having a hard time believing Hank would be so quick to source the issue as Charles manipulating a mind, and not the strange cosmic phenomenon that he witnessed with his own eyes just a few days ago. No civilians pass this FBI. If they can just steal FBI identities and do this, why do they have any obstruction between them and their goal? This truly is an unfortunate development. Why, why is that? Because it's so much easier to understand your language when you're not screaming. <laughs> What? This alien somehow believes it's cool to run with this kind of supervillain dialogue, first with the setup, then with the punchline? Did these assholes evolve from a world created by Stallone and Schwarzenegger movies? Also, why do the aliens need to torture the dad at all? To find out where he sent Jean when she was little? They wouldn't need this information at all, considering they were watching the X-Men save the space shuttle and could have easily followed them back to the school. The hell? Does he have metal shoes? He can manipulate metal, and we've seen him fly plenty of times using metal. Here, he's hovering in like grown-up Brightburn, and it's lazy. Line up to the right if you want to say he was harvesting metal elements from the air to blah blah bull Whose blood is that? Magneto asks a very good question, considering she had no blood on her when she flew away from Mystique, and when we see her in the rain, she's got a nasty stain. My guess is she killed my hope for this movie. So I stopped. I don't know how to stop. You don't even know how you started, which is hilarious, by the way, because you went to space and sucked a whole purple cloud thing into your body, and no one is talking about that at all. At all. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can lift choppers much better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. So after obliterating their camp and some army dudes, she flies away without having learned anything about her new powers or evolved even one iota. This is filmmaking at its finest. Leave this place! I need your help! When I've needed help in the past, I find that shoving the person down is a great way to start. Who are you? The better question is, who are you? God damn it. Let's go already! Hank's not in class. Did you check his quarters? Yeah, he's not there either. So why not just lead with Hank is gone, maybe? He's dead. Jean killed her. So Fassbender is gonna do a clinic right now on acting with your f***ing face. Everyone that wants to be a great actor should study this. I'm gonna take two sins off because Fassy Boy is killing it, even in a movie that mostly sucks fuzzy weasel balls. She pops up to say, I alone can save you, Gene, and they both walk through New York City to this townhouse like they have no powers at all. Honestly, establishing shots shouldn't kill your mythology. What was it? A pure and unimaginably powerful cosmic force. Oh, thanks. We were there, Gene, following that force. Why? Because it's the spark that gave life to the universe. The all spark! Transformers invading my X-Men movies. It's your destiny, Gene, to become something greater, to evolve into the greatest force in the galaxy. However, there's a decent chance that this incredible power will skip you at the last minute and make Bran Stark the greatest force in the galaxy. We both love Raven. Yes. Glad we got this out of the way. F***ing film could have been called X-Men. The huge waste of time. Probably would have made about the same amount of money, too. If he'd really been done being Magneto, he wouldn't have put this f***ing helmet in a drawer in his f***ing closet. I'm not going to ask you to go. I am. We need you. I've got your back. Look. End of discussion. What? What just happened? A lot of people talked, and maybe at the end Storm shut down Professor X? You're always sorry, Charles. And there's always a speech. But nobody cares anymore. You can say that again. Magneto would f***ing rule at CinemaSins. The girl dies. And you know who else? Anyone in the building here. Kurt, I need you! Kurt, get me inside. Kurt is a crucial piece of this plan, but just minutes ago, Charles specifically said, Kurt, I'd like to take Scott and I there, but that's all. I want you to leave us there, and then come home. So why is Kurt even here? <laughs> God damn, this film is cut up more than Edward Scissorhands' girlfriend on prom night. Feel the power inside you. That power.
power is you. I hereby break ground on the brand new Jean Grey School for people who believe everything a perfect stranger says about them as long as it's an empowering compliment. There will only ever be one student, but she will ace the exams. I'm all for seeing Magneto flex his powers, but he has a sea of cars at his disposal, so why not use those to create the barrier you think you need with a subway car? This just seems like an incredible amount of wasted energy, but what do I know? My mutant power is the ability to sense when my frozen pizzas are baked without using a timer. <laughs> And you couldn't even do that. This was Magneto's big push to kill Jean. A pokey banister? Where's the metal shard sandwich? I see at least one other metal lamp in the background, buddy. Give it a go. Wow, Dark Phoenix is strong, yo. It's a wonder there are still 30 minutes left in this movie. Look, I don't want to be an insensitive dick. Wait, okay, maybe I do. But if she has the power to force him to walk up the stairs, even though his legs don't work, does she still have to force him to lurch and limp all the way? Wouldn't it be a better show of her power if he walked up like he'd been walking upstairs the last 10 years of his life? Oh, look, the vague, poorly defined alien antagonist is just standing up and shaking off her wounds to be a Terminator. Which is fun, except not. Mutant containment unit or a nod to something else. I'd give good money if one person in this movie gave me an explanation for how handcuffs and those neck locks keep all these heroes from using their powers, because that shit is glossed the f over hard. Good money! A barrage of small bullets won't kill the alien, but this one will. Okay, movie. You do you. No! What are you doing? What Raven would have. Jesus Christ, Raven is entering Vesper Lynn James Bond territory at this point. She's dead, but they are never going to stop talking about her. I'll be honest, a lot is happening right now, but I'm too dizzy from the editing to care. Nightcrawler goes all Quicksilver and wins a scene by rapidly killing a bunch of evil fools, but it's still too little too late. This reminds me of one time my dog ate a long piece of fabric, and when it finally made its way through the intestines, it just hung out of her ass like a second tail. Thank God for rubber gloves. And also, f*** this movie for making me relive this. She seems pretty f***ing powerful even without having stolen Jean's mojo. This would be a much more dramatic moment if we hadn't seen every other alien survive this. I don't care how powerful of an alien you are, if you wear high heels in a minefield of bullet casings, you will fall down. Dude, what if the train itself leaps off the tracks and flies? That's too expensive to animate, Marv. No one's gonna be still paying attention to this point in the film. We could cheap out on that flying train animation and save a bunch of money. Do it. Even Thanos is jealous of that stylish dusting. You can't control it. If you kill me, you'll kill them all. I call bull Jean just saved her friends from a train car ride from hell while controlling her powers, and while absorbing all the alien energy may destabilize her again, why would it be any different now than it was when she had all the energy before? No matter the explanation, this is a lazy way to wrap up the movie and give Jean a reason to zip up to outer space. Your emotions make you weak. Actually, it's a lack of exercise and terrible diet, but sure, let's blame the emotions too. She's gone. She is not. I've seen all the X-Men movies multiple times, and I'm goddamn positive that Days of Future Past links the early years films to the present day films. But here we have the early years cast killing off Jean Grey, even though she was literally in the end scene from Days of Future Past, only way older and way more fomka -y. And the movie goes on to say she evolved beyond this world but still exists. But then why is Fomka at the end of Days of Future Past? What gives? What the hell gives? How is this place not overrun with MCU? They know the mutants escaped, and there was a hostile alien takeover, and nobody has sent a plane or helicopter? Where are the NPCs? At. I evolved beyond this world. But have found a way to narrate this movie from afar through the magic of cosmic radio waves. I can't read the small print underneath this sign, but I think I get the gist. It says, F Graven. Long time ago, you saved my life. Then you offered me home. I'd like to do the same for you. It's called Disney. Oh, Charles, you'll love it there. There are so many like us just waiting to team with us and crowd the screen with a phalanx of heroes so vast, screenwriters will get arthritis trying to give them scenes. I go easy on you. No, you weren't. <laughs> These movies have always been about this friendship, except for this Dark Phoenix movie, which was about aliens and Jean Grey, but still oddly has the Charles Eric chess game ending. Flame, flames, flames on the side of my face. Have you ever watched a music video and wondered, how'd this person get here? Like, the true story? Well, if you're looking for answers, you've come to the right place. Check out Music From Behind, the new series from Music Video Sins that dives deep into the cavernous secrets of your favorite celebrities. Why did Justin Bieber decide to grow that mustache? And does it have anything to do with Russian election interference? Why are Offset and Cardi B so magnetically attracted to each other? And how does that impact the weather in Topeka, Kansas? What does BTS really stand for? Is Kelly Clarkson an adorable robot made specifically specifically for broadcast television? Will Billie Eilish ever speak above a whisper? And if not, why? Find out all this and more on the brand new series, Music From Behind. Okay, here I am. Sorry I'm late. What do you need? Um, I think we're actually done. Holy f seriously? Okay, awesome. I'm gonna go cyber stalk my college girlfriend for a while. Uh, after I watch this new show, of course. Cool, that'll give me time to call the authorities.
Wait, what were we talking about? Music from behind! Watch it! Player X subscribed to the belief that money won was twice as good as money earned. He lived to beat people and take their money. Here's Player X. Close my eyes Only for a moment and the moment's gone I've heard that Asian people's music aids digestion. Do you know, a family of lions can eat 35 pounds a day? Project Genesis, a proposal to the Federation. What exactly is Genesis? Well, put simply, Genesis is life from lifelessness. And what you choose to do with your gift, well, that's entirely up to you. You are who you choose to be. Kurt, where is she? Who are you? It's Jean. Wait, it's Jerry. I don't know what to do. It's Jean. She's all desire, all rage, all pain. All right, all right, all right. Get in the chopper! Get in the chopper!